If we write about Russia and Russianism, we must start by writing about its entire history. Let's recall Novgorod, Tver, Kazan, Astrakhan, Siberia. Everything that happened in Russia's history, in modern international legal terms, is genocide. This is Russianism. I believe the uniqueness of this book lies in its ability to help answer one question. What is Russianism as the quintessence of Russian nationalism, chauvinism, Nazism, racial discrimination, and all other things that today are characterized as genocide? In the case of Russianism, we see a repetition of the global European mistake of failing to recognize an authoritarian, totalitarian, destructive ideology at its inception, leading to severe consequences later on. It wasn't just Europe that failed to recognize what Russianism was. Many of us in Ukraine initially perceived it as something much simpler. It is crucial today that we document and actively participate in addressing the manifestations of Russianism. Indeed, the history of Russianism is a history of social violence, from the Oprichnina to Jewish pogroms, from the destruction of Ukrainian intelligentsia to the Holodomor. This is a historical phenomenon, a continuity inherent in the ethnic group known as Russians. Stalinism hasn't disappeared, nor has Russian fascism. It remained latent until the 21st century and found fertile ground with Putin's rise to power. Russian fascism, present since the 19th century, persists in both organizational and ideological principles. The ideological roots that underpin modern Russian fascism go much deeper into history. Oban Russism does not mean we can simply prohibit it. To ban Russism means understanding the meanings conveyed by this ideology, this social practice, and this way of behavior. Much in this world depends on how people behave. Therefore, we must understand not only the essence of Russism itself, but also our behavior and actions over many centuries concerning it. As a wise man once wrote, the past we do not remember, the past we forget, can inevitably come back to us with overwhelming force. To prevent this, we must learn some patterns of that return, which could engulf us repeatedly over time. The fourth generation always repeats the first. I write that Putin did not learn the lessons of the past, but so did us. The most important thing is that national unity is not formed through preferences or the destruction of one by another. National unity is formed through the commonality of worldview. The stronger we are in our worldview compared to our competitors, the better we will be able to resist anything that may come our way. Rashism concerning Ukraine has always been and remains the extermination of Ukrainian culture, language, and everything that set us apart from others. We were labeled the Malarossi, Kokols, and immediately placed in the second class, told we were peasants, and clearly designated our place under the sun, referring to the Russian Empire. Why are we so foolish? Why are we so poor? Why are we ideologically oppressed people? Where do the roots of this hatred come from, from this nation that for so long called us brothers? The roots lie in their history, and if we speak of Nazism, what is happening in Russia today is elementary Nazism. Now we are living in the conditions of the World War III. When the World War I occurred, the rashists of the early 20th century wanted to solve the Ukrainian question once and for all. Back then, the rashists wanted to solve the Ukrainian question definitively, to put an end to Ukrainianness. One of the reasons for their involvement in the Great War, World War I, was to eradicate Mazepism, to eliminate the Ukrainian Piedmont, to end Ukrainianness both spiritually and physically. Let's remember that everything Ukrainian was destroyed. You know, Ukrainian historians always tell us 
Why did we lose? They explain the reasons for our defeats. I think this war must end differently. We will explain to our descendants the reasons for our victory. From 1933 to 1939, destroyed 10,000 of his opponents, while the Stalinist regime from 1918 to 1939 killed over 15 million Ukrainians alone. Putin is repeating the ideas of Lenin and Stalin, their policies, their actions. Communo-fascism acted against Ukrainians during the Second World War, specifically the brutal mobilization of 15 to 17-year-old children and teenagers to the front, over 300,000 mobilized who were thrown into battle without training or weapons. The Stalinist regime, claiming victory for itself, forgets that Ukrainians fought geographically in the Red Army more than Russians. Imagine the territory of the Russian Federation and compare it to the territory of Ukraine, much smaller. What is happening now after February 24th is also an event of global historical significance because the world has trembled, the world has awakened. The global community which was dozing off, especially the European liberal community that thought it could negotiate with the monster, could pat him on the shoulder, or have a 17-hour phone conversation like Mr. Macron did with the head of this fascist state formation. This delusion has now fallen away. It has become clear that evil cannot be dealt with diplomatically. It cannot be negotiated with, as was the case in 2008, the first powerful manifestation of this rashism in the example of Georgia. And when the Blitzkrieg's teeth were knocked out by our armed forces and territorial defense forces, the world realized what Ukraine is.